much for joining me for Word Empowerment Wednesday. I thank the Father for allowing us to see another day that we have never seen before. I don't know about you, but I am truly, truly grateful. Um, I thank God for his grace and his mercy that is yet keeping us. Um, this morning, I, I, I don't have a long word for you. Oh, you can't hear me? Can you hear me better now? Let me know. Can you hear me now? Yes, no. Can you hear me? Let me know if you can hear me or not. Okay, let me move my thing a little closer to me. Okay, okay. all right, you can hear me. Amen. This morning, um, I'm not going to be before you long, I promise you. <laughs> but I do want to give you this word that the Lord has given me coming out of the book of 1 Samuel chapter 3. Um, the scripture is going to be a very um, kind of lengthy, but I want you, good morning cousin, but I want you to get an understanding of what um, I have to say to you this morning. So turn with me to the book of 1 Samuel chapter 3 verses 4 down to verse number 14. And beginning at verse number four, it says, Suddenly the Lord called out Samuel. Yes, Samuel replied, What is it? He got up and he ran to Eli. He said, Here I am. Did you call me? And I didn't call you, Eli replied. Go back to bed. So he did. So then the Lord called out again, Samuel. Again, Samuel. He got up and he went to Eli. Here I am. Did you call me? I didn't call you, my son, Eli, said, go back to bed. Verse number seven. So Samuel did not yet know the Lord because he had never had a message from the Lord before. So the Lord called a third time. And once more, Samuel got up and went to Eli. He said, here I am. Did you call me? So then Eli realized that it was the Lord who was calling the boy. So he said to Samuel, go and lie down again. And if someone calls again, say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel went back to bed and the Lord came and called as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel replied, Speak, your servant is listening. So then the Lord said to Samuel, I'm about to do a shocking thing in Israel. I am going to carry out all my threats against Eli and his family from beginning to end. I have warned him that judgment is coming upon his family forever because his sons are blaspheming God and he hasn't disciplined them. So I have vowed that the sins of Eli and his sons would never be forgiven by sacrifices or offerings. I don't have a, a word this morning, but um, a specific word per se, but I want to leave this thought with you. I have two questions, and my, question, my first question is, how is your hearing? And then my second question is, are you listening? How is your hearing, and are you listening? There are times I could be doing something, and it seems like when I'm doing something, my husband wants my undivided attention, and he will say something to me, and sometimes he will ask, did you hear me? <laughs> and my response most of the time is, no, I, I heard you, but, you know, I don't know what you said. And many times that would cause him to be irritated. Why? Because I heard him, but I really wasn't listening. Understand, there is a difference between hearing and listening. Hearing is that um, is is a applied voice, applied sound that you hear. Listening is actually taking what you hear into action. So I ask again this morning: Are how's your hearing, and are you listening? Because there is a lot of noise in the in the atmosphere, 
and there has been a sound that has been released um, even this morning before I got on, I was, um, I don't generally listen to, listen to the news. And sometimes I will just so that I can be up to par about what's going on. But if you stay long enough and you be so attentive and listening to the news, it will cause you to be fearful. They're back and forth with their masks. They're back and forth about what you should do concerning this virus. And it is causing people to be in a fear tactic. Not only that, but they're also talking about tactics. And if you don't get your taxes done, you may not get your refund. Well, many of us may not get one anyway because we're not expecting one. But it puts fear into the hearts of the people. And God wants you to know, he wants to know, how is your hearing? Are you listening? Are you listening? Are you applying? Because truly God is speaking. He may not be speaking um like he used to. I mean, many people say, you know, God said this, God said that. No, I don't believe God is doing all of that. But I believe, I do believe that he's sending us signs. He's, he's sending warning to us. But we have to take heed. On this journey of life, that we call life, it is inevitable that we're going to have some testing. We're going to have some trials. There are going to be some times when it seems like you're all alone. There are going to be times when it seems like you're praying and there's no answer. There are going to be times when things don't look good and it just don't feel good. Times when God would allow us to take an inventory of ourselves. And I truly believe this is what is happening now. I just, I'm not talking about anybody else i'm talking about what i believe that god is causing me to take an inventory of me and 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 then it's how we react to the news how we react to the noise that is around us how we respond to what we are hearing my god paul tells us this he says rejoice in hope be patient in tribulation and be constant in prayer in other words, my hope is in God no matter what I'm hearing, no matter what I am seeing. My hope is in God. Therefore, I can rejoice in him. Therefore, I can be patient in tribulation because I realize that season change. This is only temporary. What I am going through is only temporary. Hmm. I got to learn within myself to press my way through no matter what I am faced with. Why? Because I know that God is with me. And then he ends it with, you have to be constant in prayer. That means I don't pray to God just when I need something. I don't pray to God just when I'm in a trial, I'm going through a tribulation. No, my prayer should be constant. I shall always have a prayer of thanksgiving. And then James conclude this, no matter what we're going through, he said, blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. Why? For when he has stood the test, he will see what? A crown of life. That is what I'm working for. The crown of life. I can't get that crown if I end the race and don't finish it. I can't get that crown if I throw in the towel. Oh, no. I got to learn how to be steadfast and unmovable no matter what I am faced with. And then he ends it with this. This is a promise to those who love God. I got a promise, and the promise is I will receive a crown of life. That means God is not short of his promises. Whatever God says, guess what? He's going to do. So this morning, I have come to remind you to be mindful of what you are hearing. With all that's going on, be mindful of what you are listening to, what you are applying to your spirit. Because in this dispensation that we are living in, we have got to have an ear to hear. My God. Jesus said, he who has an ear to hear, let him hear. So I ask again, are you listening? What are you hearing? As we begin to look at this text, it talks about a little boy by the name of Samuel, who we know his mother's name was Hannah, and this was her promised child. 
she had been barren for a long time and she, she said god she made a vow to god god if you will give me your, if you will bless me with the seed i promise to give him back to you and that's exactly what she did she gave him back to god she took him to the temple and she left him there he was raised inside of the temple and the bible even lets us know that he began to worship god he began to to be in the presence of god yet he did not know god's voice mm. <laughs> my god did you know that it is possible to worship him and not know him to not have an intimate relationship with him. This is why Jesus told the woman at the well, they that worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. What was he talking about? Because the woman was stuck on the place of worship. He was, Jesus was trying to tell, let her know, it has nothing to do with the church. It has nothing to do with the building. Worship has to do with the matter of the heart. Mm. There's a difference. So the Bible lets us know in 1 Samuel chapter 1 that he had been in the presence of God, but he did not know God's voice. He did not have an intimate relationship with God. And so here it is. He's laying down. He's beginning to rest. And he keep hearing his name. I don't know, perhaps the, because in the Bible even said in the first verse that God had not been speaking. God was, was silent during this time. He wasn't speaking a whole lot, just like it is today. He's not speaking a whole lot. Oh, God, help me, Lord. And so he laid down and he heard his name. So immediately he thought it was Eli. Who else can be talking to me? I don't know about you, but I've had that experience. I was riding in my car, and I heard instructions. <laughs> and I said, okay, ain't nobody in this car but me. And, and you would think I was losing my mind, but I wasn't. And I remember this time because it was a call on my life. And I was running from God. And, and immediately when I got home, I called my pastor at the time, and I said, what is this? He had already got confirmation of what it was. He was just waiting on me to make it mani to manifest in me, to for me to accept the call. And I never forget that. And so this is the same thing that is happening to Samuel. But look what happened. He didn't do like most of us do. You know the song when you can't sleep at night. Sleep at night. Maybe God is trying to tell you something. Many times God would awaken us, and what do we do? We go right back to sleep. We don't pray. We 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 um. We get on social media when God is trying to speak to us, my God. And so he began, God began to call out his name, Samuel, Samuel. He goes to Eli. Eli said, I didn't call you. He goes back and laid down. He hears his name again, and he goes back and laid down. He hears his name the third time. And then Eli realized, okay, perhaps this is God speaking to you. So when he does this again, I need for you to do what? Say, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. My God, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. And so when God called him the third time, he was humble. He was submissive. And, and, and basically what Eli was telling him, you have got to say, God, here I am. What, what you need for me to do. Here I am. And that is what God is seeking for in this hour. Do not be moved by what you see and by what you hear. And be careful of what you and who and what you are listening to. And when God woke him up this third time, Samuel heard his voice. And he reacted on what God said. And because of his faithfulness, because of his submission, because of his humbleness, God gave him instruction. God was getting ready to use Samuel. Yes, Eli was in place. But Eli was, he was one of those, um, those, those people that, you know, in leadership, you see your child in wrong, but you don't rebuke him. And God said, because of that, I've got to, um, I got to reprimand you. You know, you and your sons. 
Because his sons were doing what? They were allowing anything and everything in the temple. They were doing all kinds of stuff. And so God was like, you know what? I, I can't use you. So I'm raising someone up who will use, who I can use and who will, uh, who will serve me. And this is what God is doing in this season. He is raising up a generation. Don't be tricked or moved by, uh, by every sound and doctrine. Because the Bible said that in the last days, there are going to be many that say they are of me and they are not. We have to be careful in how we hear and how we are listening, how we are applying it to ourselves. Because when God speaks, he gives instructions. My God. He speaks destiny, destiny in our lives. God spoke to Samuel to give him instruction. And this is what he said, Behold, I will cause Israel to hear. I am about to do a thing in Israel that will cause their ears to tinkle. Listen, I don't know about you, but that is what God is doing in this season. My God, look around you. I said this last week, look around you. The birds are confused. The, 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 the geese are confused. The animals are confused. This, the moon and the sun. They don't, they're not going in like they used to. There's different things that are happening with this virus. It's not one variant, it's another. But don't be moved by that. Do not go into a spirit of fear. Why? Because God has not given us the spirit of fear. But he's given us what? Power, love, and a sound mind. It's so easy. I said this last night when I was teaching. It is so easy for us to go in a fear tactic. Why? Because now they're saying with this new virus, you don't know if it's a cold or a virus. <laughs> My God. The same symptoms. And then immediately what happens when I throw this so, oh my God, do I got the virus? I know start running. Oh my God, do I have the virus? I got cold symptoms. And God is saying, listen, who do you trust? Do you trust me to know that I am Jehovah Rapha? Do you trust me to know that I am the God that healeth thee? Do you trust me? I believe, my God, that God is causing us to put our faces to the wall. My God, this journey that we are on, only the remnant is going to be saved. What do you mean by that? Those that are willing to be sold out. Those that are willing to be in the presence of God. Those that are willing, my God, to pick up the word and read and to pray. Those that say, you know what? I know what they say, but I know, I know in what I see, but I know in whom I believe, and I believe in God. I believe in Jesus Christ. We got to trust God and take him at his word. Again, are you listening? Do you hear? How's your hearing? Are you listening? Are you taking time and say, you know what? I got a. I said this on Monday. I, I said, you know what? I, I've got to get a, in a posture where I can just be in the presence of God. You know, in order to have a relationship with God, listen, Samuel knew of God, but he really didn't have that intimate relationship until now. My God, communication. That is the number one attribute to having a good relationship. And so many of us fail it. We fail it in our homes. We fail it in our marriages. We fail it with our friends. We fail it with all relationship, communication. That is the key. My God, communication. How do we communicate with God? Through his word, through prayer. And many of us, we don't pick up our word until the Sunday morning. We, we, don't, we don't pray until we get to the place where we are forced to pray. And God is saying, no longer am I, are you going to use me that way. My God, communication. Talk with the Father. And then when you begin to talk with him, listen. Be quiet. 
and listen to hear what he has to say. And you'll find that many times he's not going to say much. My God. Many times he, he's silent. But you got to be willing to listen and get into a posture of prayer. A posture of seeking his face. Not his hands about what he can give you, but seeking his face. I challenge you for the, for, for the remainder of this year to get into a posture where you can be able to hear and to listen, because there is a difference, to hear and to listen, and hear and listen to what God has to say. My God, let us pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord, we bless you. God, we honor you and we magnify you. God, we thank you for this word, God, God that is causing us to to, to know the difference between hearing and listening. To know, Father God, that you are causing us, Lord, in this season to get into a posture of prayer. To get into a posture of reading your word and seeking your face, God. I pray now, Father God, for every listener, Lord, that they will listen. That they will not be bound by what they see. That they will not be bound about what they hear on on social media or what they hear on television we counsel and oh god the plot in the scheme of the enemy even now we counsel the spirit of fear we say in the name of jesus that we will not be fearful by what men say we will not be fearful about the enemy devices we will recognize the enemy for who he is because god we know that the enemy comes to kill still and to destroy but god we thank you that the greater is in you so god we bless your name this morning god god we thank you lord god that you sit high and god that you look low and that you hold everything in the palm of your hand yes there may be some rocky roads yes so god we may have to go through a test and a trial but god i thank you this morning that seasons change and god i thank you lord god that trouble don't last always so god we bless your name this morning and god we give you all the glory now god we seal this word we seal this prayer by the blood of Jesus, we come against the spirit of backlash, delay, or immediate. We cancel every plot and scheme of the enemy, and we seal this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Listen tonight at 830. Join in. You don't have to say a word. <laughs> you can put your phone on mute. And join us for prayer as we come together and pray at 830. This is by way of conference call. Um, you can find the flyer on this page, or you can go to my page, which is Kimberly Furby or Kimberly Perkins Furby, either one, uh, um, for 8.30 tonight for prayer. Then on Monday night, listen, we are doing a teaching on the book of John, the book of John. Um, we are still in chapter number one. And listen, God has been doing, I don't know about anyone else, but God has really been blessing us through his word. Um, I thank God for um, um, the teaching. I thank God for him being the teacher. So join us on Monday night at 8 p.m. And that is by way of conference call as well. Okay? And again, you can find the flyers on my page. Um, it should begin with 267. And if you can't join us on Monday night, join us back here next Wednesday morning at 5 a.m. to see what the Lord has to say to us um, for Word Empowerment Wednesday. I say to you, and I say this every week, something great is going to happen for us. And how do I know? Because we serve a great and mighty God who cannot fail and will not ever fail. So I say to you, have a blessed and wonderful day and knowing that you are loved and that you are appreciated. God bless you.